It's been rather boldly called the wonder material for the 21st century and one of the biggest scientific developments of recent decades. Incredibly strong, flexible and conductive, despite being just one atom thick, graphene created quite a stir when it was properly discovered back in 2004. Then the possibilities seemed endless, and construction was one of the areas set to benefit, with space elevators and record-breaking skyscrapers made from graphenated composites among the early predictions. But nearly 20 years later, it's fair to say those prophecies were just a bit wide of the mark, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that graphene was nothing more than a load of hype. But you'd be wrong, because now that long-awaited moment where graphene finally finds its way into construction has arrived. For thousands of years, new materials have come along and transformed the way we build. It's happened with everything from wood and stone to concrete and steel, but it's been some time since something completely disrupted this industry. Enter graphene, a material that's been seemingly about to take over the world for years that's now in with an actual real chance of joining this prestigious club. Yes, really. Before we go any further, it might be useful if we told you what graphene actually is. It's where carbon atoms are bonded together in a hexagonal lattice, a bit like honeycomb, and it's this arrangement that's largely what makes graphene so special. Another material with a similar name and structure is graphite, which you'll know as the stuff that goes in pencils. With graphite, these lattices are positioned in layers. Strip down graphite to just one atomic layer and you're left with graphene. This means it's two-dimensional, giving it some pretty unique properties. It's 200 times stronger than steel by weight, lighter than paper, it's super flexible, and it's the most conductive material of both electricity and heat ever discovered. You're probably now realizing why it generated so much excitement when it was first discovered, but in the years that followed, all that initial enthusiasm began to fizzle out. Innovators couldn't figure out how to make the stuff in bulk, which is necessary to create actual products, ones that offered real, noticeable improvements. Until now. Let's get to the point then and stop stringing you along. How is graphene now being applied in construction and is it making much of a difference? Initially, graphene research into materials over the kind of decades past has been composite materials or coating materials, membranes, for example. But we're seeing a big shift into construction materials. Dr. Lisa Scullion is Application Manager at the Graphene Engineering Innovation Centre, or GEIC, based at the University of Manchester in the UK. You can increase the strength of your material, concrete for example, in such a way that you can actually use less concrete. What we're seeing when we put graphene into concrete is that we get huge amounts of early strength. So we get very, very high tensile strength um, in the first few days of the concrete curing. We get less water ingress, we get less corrosive iron ingress into the concrete. So it's really multifunctional. In May 2021, Nationwide Engineering, in partnership with the GEIC, became the world's first construction firm to lay a graphene concrete slab in a commercial setting for a new gym that's being built near Stonehenge. To make its new product, Concretine, the company put tiny amounts of graphene into what's otherwise a fairly standard concrete mix strengthening the material by around 30% and giving it anti-cracking properties too. Crucially, it can be used just like normal concrete, without the need for extra training or equipment when mixing or laying it. Companies like Nationwide, they've, they've taken a big risk in actually constructing with graphene concrete because obviously there's lots of regulations around concrete and the industry doesn't necessarily move very quickly. And I think because they've started to take risks, a lot of other people are, are now wanting to take those risks too. In fact, they already are. 3D printed graphene enhanced concrete is set to be deployed on one of the world's biggest infrastructure projects, HS2, the UK's second high-speed rail scheme. For the main line out of London Euston, parts of the retaining walls will be made from concrete that's 3D printed by machines. Microscopic strands of graphene will be applied to the mix, making the material so strong that no steel reinforcement will be needed. Replacing rebar doesn't just mean less material, it can make sites safer, offer more flexibility and save time, which is just what's needed on a project that's been more than a little controversial. Elsewhere in the world of transport, graphene has already proven to be an effective additive for surfaces like roads and runways. 
At Rome's Fiumicino Airport, a new type of graphene-enhanced tarmac has been trialled, which its creators claim is twice as long-lasting as regular asphalt. Developed by Eta Chemica, the material called G-Pave combines graphene with a special type of plastic that's not normally recycled. It's also been used on roads, including one in Oxfordshire. Here, a 750 meter stretch was upgraded with the material to make it less likely to crack in cold and wet weather. That's what leads to potholes, one of the few things guaranteed to send a British person into a full-blown rage. As well as being used to increase strength, graphene can be mixed into liquid coatings which are then applied to structures for a specific purpose, like preventing corrosion. Chinese firm The Sixth Element Materials found that adding just 1% of graphene to one of its coatings allowed it to reduce the amount of zinc used by 65%. That's another material that can be harmful to the environment. When applying the coating to steel bridges and wind turbines built around seawater, which is what causes the corrosion, they found it could last twice as long as regular formulas. It's all being made possible by rapid progress on the production side. Now we've got to the point where there's lots of different graphene producers. There's ways to make it at scale that are cost effective. Now that the supply chain's there, we know if we want to make a huge, huge concrete structure, you know, we can get enough graphene of the right grade to use for that structure. And that's been one of the big drivers, I think. While these case studies aren't quite on the same scale as the mad concepts we showed you at the beginning, there are signs that graphene could finally be realising its potential in this most critical of industries. I'd say in the future, short term, maybe in the next kind of five years, we'll still be at a similar stage in, in using graphene in construction, just because we have to deal with industry regulations and such things. But going forward, I think now that people realise the potential, I think there'll be a whole raft of different different applications and different products that, that come out of this. We might have to wait a bit longer to build that space elevator, although that's clearly a challenge that this wonder material was never really going to solve on its own. In the meantime, all eyes will be on graphene once again to see where it goes next. At least this time, there's a solid foundation to build on. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about where construction is headed, make sure you're subscribed to tomorrow's build.